I just plug in the power strip to the wall outlet and uh, start warming up. Usually I do this immediately after I finish connecting uh, the two long power, uh, long nylon ties and uh, connecting the power cord for the analyzer so I can start warming up. We need to have warm up of 30 minutes before we can do gas cow and the flow cow. Okay, so with that power connected, now I'm connecting the power for the weather station. Weather station usually should be on the patient's side, and then that's the extra space I saved for weather station. Also, that side we have the swing arm. If I leave the computer monitor away from the patient's side, swing arm will not hit the monitor. Now we have the power cord for the weather station. I will plug it in. After you plug in, you will hear beep three times. Beep three times, after that it will say, thanks for choosing our weather station. When it say, enter time, you should not enter time. Instead, you should press and hold the done button for three seconds. One, two, three. Then you will get into operation mode with temperature, humidity, and environmental pressure. And here is Storic City, the higher part of Storic City. So our environmental pressure is 633. If you are in sea level, you should be 760. Okay, after you mount the gas regulator to the gas tank, first, you look at the position of the valve. You need to allow at least 90 degrees open. And then you mark with four dots for initial position. And then turn the gas counterclockwise 90 degrees. So there are two gauges. Right side gauge tell you how much volume is inside the tank. And uh, right now, slightly below three quarter. Left, left hand side gauge tell you the output pressure. And uh, right now, the output pressure is F5. Usually, we want it to be between three and uh, five. And uh, I myself like four. So I will turn this knob counterclockwise. But it will not show dropping of the needle until I breathe it, put my fingernail to the tip. And that you have to look at straight. That's the instrumentation 101 to how to read the gate. Okay. It's a little bit more than three. Now, next step is testing how good the off position is. So I will turn it to the off position and I will breathe out some gas. Ooh, that means it's not totally off because as soon as I breathe out some, the gas come out of the tank. So we need to turn it even tighter. 
ena gelina Initially, after you breathe that out, it will move back up to one tick. But then, it should stop there. So this is good now. One more try. Bleed out a little bit. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, so that's good. That's it. Now, don't no. you have to mark it? This is the new off position. We used to use a metal wrench, but the students turned it on or off too hard, and that broke the valve and the tank become dead so we switch to this softer plastic wrench what if you put it in the off position and then this starts dropping pretty fast that means leak uh -huh. leak can happen at this valve at here the washer, at the regulator, at this connector, or at this end of the Calgas tube connector. All can happen. So once you put it in the off position, these dials should look about the same, stay at the same level. They should stay there. Of course, a day later, this guy should drop down to zero because we didn't try to make the whole thing airtight inside the end line. Okay. Get the Calgas tube inside the car, so it will not be caught by something else. And then you plug into the Calgas connector. Sometimes you have to press the top metal tab down. So, that's connected. Program should already be started. If not, you can double click to get the program ready. And the uh, first thing we do actually is to look at the signal display to see if all three of our signals are okay. O2 at C level should be 4 to 4.2 volt. Right now it says 3.3 .3 because we are in Salt Lake City, Utah, and the environmental pressure is only 632 instead of 760. So that's okay. CO2 usually should be 0 to 1 volt, and CO2 voltage will change with the use of the system. And uh, right now it's a little bit lower than, than 0, but not too much, so that's okay. Flow usually we set it to be minus 1.1 volt. So we got all these three voltage right. And uh, if you have the polar and the plug in, this heart rate should be zero volt or 10 millivolt. Okay, so now signal display is a program you can run on the background when you run other program. So now I'm going to do the gas part of the setup. So I get to utilities and I need to do a sampling line calibration. You do sampling line calibration to balance between your auto calibration circuit and uh, your regular testing circuit. I click here 
they say disconnect sampling line from mixing chamber while keeping the analyzer end connected and start sampling room air. So on the back side, I have the Poma Peel drying line disconnected from the mixing chamber and I let it hang there. And uh, I will start the sampling line cap. Also, if button has a focus with darker shades, you can space bar. So we are doing the sampling line calibration. A first sample from the tip of the perma pure line, then a sample from the room air port, which is part of the gas cal circuit. And you will, we use the O2 as an indicator for resistance difference. And then we record the value in HD units. So finally, it's a 0.5 HD units. That's perfect. Usually we want it to be within plus minus two HD units. So it will sample three times the difference between the regular testing circuit and the, the auto cal circuit. And then you will use the medium value, but right now the medium is 0 0.5. So new difference. So click OK. Now you can save it, but then you have to go to gas leakage test. Or you can jump, save and leakage test. So jump into gas leakage test. And the uh, gas leakage test has three parts. Gas leakage test can be started from the end of the sampling line calibration or it can be started separately. So now we start separately. You say disconnect sampling line from the mixing chamber. Let it drop. Then we click OK. Now we can do this whole thing American way jump into step two and step three. If they don't work, we're coming back to step one. So we are going to do, do this, jump into step two by blocking this sampling line and I look at the front side. So block, drop down to zero, block in, drop down to zero. So finish step two. And uh, then, we click sample from room air port. Start to do step three. And uh, put a finger in here, room air port, and I block it. We drop down to zero, block it again. Drop down to zero. Show us again. Drop down. Okay, block. Block, drop down. Because the air should be pulled in from the room air port at this time. And when you block it, it should not have any air. If it doesn't drop down to zero, it has other source of the incoming air. So then you say exit and ask you to connect the sampling line back to the mixing chamber. But instead of just connecting this way, you pre turn half a turn the other way and uh, connect it. Hey, what about step one of the leakage test? Huh? What about step one? Turn off the heater pump. Well, if step two works, then step one must work. Okay, then. I call this American way. We are going to do four meter calibration. And then the way we do it is we have a two-way bar in front of it. 
and uh, we use a smooth rubber adapter. This rubber adapter you need to replace every two, three years because it's going to crack. So quick flow shell and uh, maintenance requirement. Remember the pneumotech, you have to clean it every six months. Let's click OK. Till 21, 28, 632. Right upper side, sample baseline. <coughs> We're going to push the photo press stroke. First stroke 50 to 80. So 57. Then 100. 200. 300. If you are not familiar with flow count, I recommend you do this at least eight times until you and the syringe become one. During the setup, on the flow side, we need to do two flow meter calibration. And after that, we need to go to utilities and uh, do a flow count reconstruction. Flow count reconstruction belongs to the advanced section of the training. So first, flow meter calibration. Again, it tells you that time to clean up the pneumotech screen. So here we just click OK. And then you will pass the 21, 28, 632.3. So this time we don't have to enter that. Just round it to the closest integer. Again, right hand upper side has the default buttons, which is sample baseline. The user should stand in a way that the strong hand can move straight. And I happen to be right-handed. So I will use my left hand to hold the syringe and the right hand pull to the end. Flow count. You got to pull the syringe to the end and push it to the end so that the three liter volume can be pushed in. So we have one detection and four flashes. Purpose is to pull down the pneumotech flow meter so that it's not overheated. So after first five stroke, we have the last five. You have to vary the peak flow rate, 50 to 80, 100, 200, 300 and the four five hundred. So first stroke 50 to 80. This one you need to look at the stroke peak and uh, you have to spin your hand for the first two inches. So I got 52 then I push to the end and uh, we are 1.5 percent higher than 3 liters. After that, you are playing video games. You have 100, 200, 300, 4, 500. You have to get your waveform up to each individual library zone. So for 100, push in, 200, 300, and 4, 500. So Average difference is minus 0.5%. The low of all the five strokes is minus 2.1. High is plus 1.5. Usually you want this to be within 3%. Right now, 3.6, a little bit too big. But our purpose of the flow curve twice is to cool down the syringe 
pneumotech, pull down pneumotech, so we can do reconstruction. So I will save this one, and then I click Vocal again, click OK, sample baseline, do the second flow meter calibration. And uh, by the way, when you use the system, you don't have to do reconstruction, so life will be easier. So again, first stroke, I look at stroke peak, and I turn, twist the syringe a little bit, syringe handle a little bit, 57. I want it to be between 50 to 80. Then 100, and I try to start from same place, 200. 300 and the four five hundred. This requires lots of effort. This second time is tighter, it's minus 1.3 to plus 0.7. Difference is 2%. What's an unacceptable difference? An acceptable difference is again, it's a it's a one percent and a three percent. Usually, you like it to be 1% average difference. And uh, 1 to 3, you save it and do it again. More than 3%, you don't want to save it.